on waste management in the urban waste disposal section. And I will be your moderator today and lead you through the program. And I'm happy. Um, and, uh, thank you for joining this Waste Life City webinar on Clean Up Activities. Today, we want to understand the impact Clean Up Activities are having globally, how to organize them, and where we are heading. On today's agenda, we have for cleaning remarks by Andre Kipros, hopefully, which will be followed by contributions from our esteemed panelists. And the last part of the session will be a discussion along the questions by the audience. So, before we start, if you have any questions, please post them in the Q&A. And uh, if you have anything else to say, just want to say hello or generally remark, please use the chat for that. And so we can see. In this webinar, uh, Green Habitat Waste Life City Program wants to celebrate World Cleanup Day, which is an innovative action led by Make Sure It Works. World Cleanup Day uh, began in Estonia in 2008 and has since grown to a global movement. Last year, more than 21 million people from 180 countries cleaned up their homes. So, why do we need to clean up in the first place? One of the reasons is that currently 2 billion people do not have access to waste collection service and 3 billion people are without access to controlled waste disposal facilities. This means a lot of waste is ending up in our environment, polluting our soils. To turn the tide of our current green waste and tourism to circular economy, first we should change our wasteful behavior to the new waste world. But how can we catalyze behavior? Clean up activities might be one possibility. So today we have different speakers from different organizations and enterprises to discuss the impact of clean up activities in general and lobby events for those clean up days. And since Andre is online, I would now ask him to give his opening remarks on behalf of UN Habitat. Uh, Andre Chikos is the Chief of the Urban Basic Services Section at UN Habitat. And as I'm not seeing him, maybe we will just um, switch and go to the first panelist. And if he will come later, I'm sure he will contribute some words later. Okay. So we're going to our first. Uh, let me also say something about the agenda. Uh, as I said before, we will have now the, the, the panelists and speaking. And I'm frankly asking our panelists to stick to the time, so about five to six minutes would be great. So we have time in the end to answer some questions and to discuss along the way. Our first speaker today is Tom Kukov Navi, and he studies international business and can best be described as an accidental environmentalist after switching the rat race to pursue his passion for plastic safety. Is now leading plastic in this movement full time at 17 Seas. 17 Seas is an ocean cleanup organization with the goal of removing plastic pollution in the marine environment, preventing plastic from entering the natural environment, and educating the masses around responsible plastic consumption. Tom, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for sharing. And and sorry to everybody that can't see my face. So my video is having some technical issues. So please bear with me. Um, what I might just do really quickly is just share my screen just so you can see exactly what we're all about. So Seven Clean Seas is an ocean cleanup organization. Uh, we're based in Singapore, but we're operating heavily in both Indonesia and in Malaysia. And we're actually not an NGO. We're a social enterprise. We believe strongly that the future of kind of ocean plastic recovery and ocean the ocean plastic crisis in general needs to find a way to be economically kind of sustainable when we're looking at solutions. And that's what we're trying to do here. Um, to date, we have recovered over 62,000 kilos of plastic from the marine environment. This plastic uh, was primarily collected from Singapore when, our, when we really kind of started these activities um, and subsequently from kind of Indonesia and Malaysia in the locations that we're building out our kind of capabilities. Um, we really worked hard in the early days to get that kind of grassroots 
engagement with people um, in the in the area. Luckily, Singapore is a very small place with a very high population. So it's a great opportunity for us to get people kind of down to the beach, down to some really kind of gnarly, dirty beaches to come and do kind of vast beach cleanups. And it would be completely normal for us to be able to collect kind of two to 300, um, sorry, uh, two tons to three tons of plastic in one sitting if it was a big event. The beauty of this for us is really kind of the effect it has on people. I found that you can sit there and tell people how bad plastic is when it's in the environment until you're blue in the face. It's not going to make people change. What makes people change is the physical act of getting down to somewhere that needs some help and spending your time to pick up plastic that's in the national natural environment already. It doesn't even have to be the beach. It can just be the environment wherever you are. It's that that moment of physically doing something that really creates um, the impact. Now, we've moved on quite far from that. So we've actually employed a team of 22 people on an island of Bintan in Indonesia. These people were actually made unemployed because of COVID-19. There's a marine protected area over there, and we've taken cleanup to the next level. It's about getting kind of a big teams of local communities together to do cleanups in a marine protected area to recover both fishing and kind of post consumer plastics. They love it. We've got a long list of people over there who want to join our cruise. Unfortunately, it's difficult to finance all of that ourselves. But if anybody does want to get involved, there are so many locations in this world with people in trouble economically because of COVID-19 who might kind of be able to benefit from a system like this. The next stage after we've collected that plastic is what do we do with it? How do we unlock the value? And that's really when it comes to sourcing the plastics into its different polymer chains, storing it until we've got volumes high enough to physically send it directly to recycling plants. The beauty of our facility that we're setting up is that we can also use it as education. Everything has an educative element to it and we can get schools and religious groups and community groups down to learn kind of what happens to plastic, what is plastic and why it has a value and why we've got to protect the environment. The last project, which we're very excited about, we partnered up with Marina Bay Sands to develop a truly scalable river cleanup system. So the idea being that in one given year, our system could recover one and a half million kilos of plastic from a river. It's designed to be high volume, but low cost, off grid. We want this system to be manufactured domestically, wherever we're installing them, if there's a shipyard available, because that allows us to actually create economic stimulus as well as just the environmental benefit of the cleanup itself. The project has already gone through conceptual development and naval engineering. We're actually just going into prototyping now, which is super exciting. And we should have vessels on the kind of on the water from next year. So I guess my closing remark would be, we started as a cleanup organization, grassroots, and we just kept growing and we kept trying new things. And anyone out there listening can do exactly the same. Get out there, just do what you can do. Even if it feels like a small thing, it all adds up and it does make a big difference. Now, let me just learn how to stop sharing my screen. Um, hopefully that gives you a good understanding of Seven Clean Seas and the work we're doing. Um, there's some other fantastic panelists on here and I look forward to hearing from them. Thank you, Tom, for this inspiring intervention. And I'm sure we'll uh, learn some more, and I hope to inspire someone to take action today. So the next person is Jess Nisma, who is the CEO of the Literati, to eradicate litter. Now in 165 countries, the Literati app has its user network who are supporting to identify, map, and collect litter, resulting in an open litter database, the largest of its kind. Jeff, we are looking forward to your Thank you so much, and hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Kirshner, and I'm the founder and CEO of Literati, and we are on a mission to eradicate litter. Our story actually started because of my kids. We were hiking through the woods when my daughter noticed this plastic tub of cat litter lying in a creek, and she just looked at me and said, Daddy, that doesn't go there. And that was the eye-opening moment for me, that everywhere you look, there was litter. And so when she said that, it reminded me of when I was a kid. I used to go to summer camp, and on the morning of visiting day, right before our parents were allowed in, the camp director would say, quick, everybody go pick up 
five pieces of litter. And when you get a couple hundred kids each picking up five pieces, it doesn't take long before you have a spotless camp. What happened next was I took a photograph of this cigarette butt and I used the hashtag literati. It was an Instagram photo at the time. And what began as nothing more than one photo of a cigarette on Instagram has now turned into a community in 165 countries using an application built on iOS and Android. What we are building at Literati is really a platform that's powered by people. We are currently in 165 countries, and as of today, we've picked up over six and a half million pieces of litter, averaging right now about 12,000 pieces every 24 hours. How does it work? It's very simple. You snap a photograph. On the left-hand side, you can see the data that we start to collect. Every photo tells a story. We're able to understand who picked up what, where, and when. On the right-hand side, you can see the computer vision models that we use to understand what are the objects, materials, and brands. So what does that do? Well, that crowdsourced data leads to quite a bit of insight, and that insight leads to impact. We've built this open data platform, and it's utilized by NGOs, by schools, by brands, and by cities around the world to do really two things. One, engage their communities, and two, access quite a bit of data. And so our belief is that there have been two things that have really been missing in cleanups for as long as they've been happening. One is a sense of community, and two is that data. For years, people have been doing neighborhood litter walks and coastal cleanups, but it's been isolated. And two, there's been a lack of really insightful, accurate, and consistent information. And those are the two things that Literati is bringing to the table. Let me give you one example of what happens when you have community and data. So the Dutch Literati community collected so much information um, on plastic small PET bottles that it was used to now incentivize a deposit return scheme in the Netherlands. And what that does is it takes this item, plastic bottles that are lying in the environment, and creates a reward for them, thereby motivating people to clean them up and turn them back into the system. Coming up on September 19th, which is this Saturday, we have partnered with the Alliance 10 Plastic Waste to create what is called the All Together Global Cleanup, a massive event that will um, bring together companies and different organizations and schools and individuals to all come together to collect quite a bit of litter all around the world. We've also partnered with TED and the Alliance to create an educational portal for the All Together Cleanup. When you build something that's global, it needs to be able to have languages for everybody. So now Literati is available in 12 languages, and this is really setting the site, setting the pace for what we're doing going forward. So our focus is really working with cities. We believe that every city has its own unique litter fingerprint. And so we're also building what are called segments, the ability to capture data in a consistent and reliable manner. A segment is nothing more than moving from point A to point B, tracking how many pieces have been picked up, what distance has been covered, how long it took you to pick up all of those items. And that creates a platform for really being able to measure the efficacy of different programs that are put into place. And finally, what we've done is, because it all starts with the simplicity of a photograph, we've been able to map our taxonomy to the current scientific standards around the world leading to this global open litter database that is able to be contributed to or consumed from by anybody in the world. And we like to say that we've got a whole planet to clean. So please join us. Thank you, Jeff, um, for the work and for joining us to follow up your journey <laughs> and the impact they can have on our daily decisions. So moving along, we are now going to um, Saskia Vanjala, who is youth leader and the head of matching for Nigeria Kenya. Nigeria Kenya is a civic led match movement for young people that coordinates World Cleanup Day activities in Kenya and other initiatives for environmental conservation. Please, Oscar, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Nell, and uh, good evening to all the panelists and our viewers. Uh, I'd like to first start by thanking um, the panelists who started off the conversation and to thank the UN Habitat for organizing such an important webinar. It could enough come at a better time, especially when we are organizing for, uh, uh, we're looking forward to World Cleanup Day uh, this Saturday. 
Well, uh, the, the story, I'll start uh, with, uh, with the organization's background in context to cleanups. And we started in early 2018. And our work, we usually work with volunteers with the aim of raising awareness and implement true change in achieving a clean and healthy environment. Our flagship um, activity is the World Clean Update, but uh, Let's Do It Kenya also participates in other activities, uh, initiatives for environmental conservation. Since 2018, we have mobilized over 50,000 people and organized over 100 cleanups across the country. We have cleaned over 4,000 tons of trash. And uh, in Africa, we are among the top countries in terms of the number of cleanups, organized uh, participants, and, and the amount of trash uh, collected. This year, as you're looking forward uh, uh, to the World Cleanup Day on, 19th, on the 19th of this month, we are facing a unique challenge in terms of the nature of uh, cleanups uh, to organize and the number of participants due to the restrictions of gatherings uh, as a result of COVID-19. Um, I'm very glad at this point that a lot of our, vo our volunteers and partners have agreed to organize themselves in small groups. For instance, we have a group um, at the coast which will be conducting beach cleanups uh, on Saturday. On Saturday, And they will be doing this. Uh, they have agreed to split themselves into groups of 20 in order to observe uh, social, social uh, distancing. I'm also very happy that many volunteers and partners have agreed to conduct digital cleanup on the World Cleanup Day. Uh, as you know, in the digital world, uh, similar to the environment, there is a huge amount of trash that takes away storage space from our smartphones, uh, tablets, uh, laptops, PCs, and servers. If we delete all unnecessary files, apps, uh, photos, and videos, we are not we are not just extending the life of our gadgets uh, and saving a huge amount of carbon dioxide, but we also feel more balanced. Uh, we take control of our lives, and we will be more efficient and satisfied. It's um, it sounds like a win-win situation. You participate uh, in a digital cleanup but also at the end of the day, uh, feel more efficient and, and satisfied. Our approach to a successful cleanup activity begins uh, with mapping, which is a process where the main goal is to create an overview of the waste pollution situation. In our case, we approach it to, through our network of many volunteers, young volunteers who go out in nature on the day-to-day -day, uh, life. When they find a dump site, which shouldn't be there, they'll take a picture and uh, mark the location of the dump site so that the cleanup teams and locally, we'll know where to organize uh, the cleanups. In our case, uh, we, we use we use an app called the Trash Out app, which uh, is usually downloaded on Google Play Store and App Store. The app records the details such as the location of the dump site, trash, nature, uh, and the site of the uh, of the waste. Um, uh, someone may ask, why is mapping um, very important to us? Mapping is important because it helps us gain a better understanding of where the waste piles and uh, mismanage. Uh, mismanaged dump sites are, as well as the quantities of waste involved. This data is usually used for raising awareness and for world cleanup uh, day preparations. Our second step in organizing uh, for cleanup activities is identifying team leaders across the country. These team leaders um, act as our, our contact uh, people. They, they, they are the coordinators for, for cleanup activities at the local uh, level. They will be contacts for volunteers to reach out to them where they want to join a cleanup within within the locality. The third step of organizing for a successful cleanup activity is usually to mobilize resources required for cleanups. And uh, we are very grateful for for many um, to our many uh, partners and volunteers who have supported us in uh, in activities by providing um, masks, uh, gloves, socks, t-shirts, water, and lunch to 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 our very many volunteers. And um, the fourth step um, is. To conduct the actual uh, cleanups, in, in 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 doing the cleanups, we have worked very closely with the local authorities in organizing for cleanups in Kenya for the past three years. Our major partners have been uh, the the, the, the uh, our major partners in terms of the government, the local authorities have been uh, the county government of Nairobi, was in issue and uh, and Mombasa because the responsibility of collecting trash and keeping the environment clean is mostly with the local authorities or what we call here the county governments. They would on most occasions provide uh, their human resources and trucks to, to collect, uh, weigh and dispose uh, the trash at the designated dump sites. During uh, the last um, World Cleanup Day, we did not just uh, stop uh, at the point where we've uh, collected the trash and uh, dumped them at the designated places. We went ahead uh, and conducted a brand audit in partnership with the Breakfree from Plastic 
and uh, uh, this happened uh, across three regions in Nairobi, Eldoret, and Mombasa. Brand audit is the process where we document the brands found on plastic, on plastic waste collected uh, at cleanups. This helps us to identify companies responsible for pollution. You, uh, you'll ask what is the importance of doing this brand audit? We, we, we endeavor and uh, we're planning to do the same thing this year because we want to change the narrative and push for corporate uh, accountability by calling on these companies to stop uh, producing so much unnecessary single-use plastic uh, in the first place. Instead, we want to urge these companies to move towards real solutions that eliminate the need uh, for single-use plastic packaging altogether. Because no matter how hard we try to clean the environment uh, every single day, no matter how, how hard we try to avoid buying plastics, and no matter how much we recycle, it will never be enough. This, uh, I usually liken this to the story of an overflowing sink. There's no point uh, in mopping the floor until you, you, you turn off um, uh, the tap. We have, uh, um, on the other note, we've been criticized by a few individuals and activists who argue that our volunteer actions are not the best way to tackle the plastic uh, pollution and uh, mismanaged waste uh, that are choking um, our rivers and destroying our environment because uh, they do not address the root causes of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the waste uh, situation and plastic pollution. But uh, our, my response to critics uh, has been that uh, because we have, there is compelling evidence that our cleanup activities do make a difference, and not just in the short term, but also in the, in the long term. If you ask me whether we have any regrets for the cleanups activities that we've organized over the past uh, three years, I'll say no, we'll still do the same thing over and over again, because every piece of trash that is taken away to be recycled or deposited in a landfill means there's one less dangerous item for humans, birds, turtles, whales, um, uh, or even uh, uh, other animals, aquatic animals to swallow. The cleanups that you do also serve to educate. When volunteers see just how much plastic is deposited in our shows, they are often inspired to reduce their reliance on single-use plastics and crucially to spread the word uh, to others. Apart from the other economic uh, benefits uh, where if, if our beaches are littered and our cities um, dirty, we may not be able to do uh, business or even attract uh, uh, tourists. There can be no denying the fact that volunteer cleanups create momentum and raises awareness to serve uh, to serve um, our environment. But uh, on the other note, I must admit that um, the issue of mismanaged waste is monumental and multifaceted, and there cannot be a single activity that can, that can turn back the clock. There's no silver bullet. However, Public engagement um, is very critical to encourage behavior change and increase pressure on governments and business to take action. You might not uh, be a member of Let's Do It Kenya. You might not be an expert on matters environmental conservation, or you might not have a role in, in government, but we can all pick up the rubbish that is lying uh, in front of us. It is not the only solution, uh, so I must say, but it is a critical component of the complex solution that, that is required uh, for this complex problem. Thank you, and looking forward to um, continuing with the discussion. Thank you for those words. And um, we are halfway through our panelists, and I just want to encourage our audience to post questions for the discussion afterwards. Uh, so we are now going to Professor Pankaj Kulari, who is the founder of Let's Do It India, a subdivision of Let's Do It World. One of the forefront activists of the Let's Do It campaign in Asia, he, with his organization, has been working on mobilizing millions of positive-minded, action-oriented people to address environmental and social concerns in India. Professor Pankaj, we're looking forward to seeing and hearing from you. Thank you, Elaine, for introducing me for your kind words. And I would like to thank to the UN Habitat also and to all the panelists who have given their time and for this wonderful webinar. So, you know, I will start by just saying these are very wise words. Uh, someone has said that, you know, every aspect of our lives is in a sense, vote for the world we want to live in. And when we are working in the Let's Do It World family or the Let's Do It World network, we always want to go for it. And, you know, the simply is, is if, if I give you the simple message, you know, what Let's Do It World does and how Let's Do It India does, that, you know, if you want to make a change in a world, we do in the collaboration with the uh, working together. I remember Jeff Tonya, uh, I think two years back, and I saw his 
this uh, this uh, uh, the presentation which he showed us today also it's a very fantastic and we also working with other collaborations like government entities international organizations researchers academicians and the volunteers of course and this is to see you know to whom and how to generate a kind of impact what we are in here also and you know let's do it what we brought together worldwide 17 million people last year with 158 countries and in india if, if i talk that we you know we had this 1.6 million people as a active volunteers participated on a very single day world cleanup day so this is not, not just to pick up the waste but you know this the i I always urge to my volunteers when we did as a team, you know, in the cleanups in the cities, in the rural parts of India, because we have, because uh, we have in India a lot of parts which are rural. So where there is no, you know, uh, very strictly applied municipal corporations to pick up the waste. You know, I always tend to tell the people that, you know, just do not just pick up the waste, but also understand the waste situation. And this is to change, you know, you can say the mindset and to bring awareness and to change the behavior of the people also. So on this and every World Cleanup Day, and apart from the World Cleanup Day also, if I tell you, you know, the Let's Do It India also uh, regularly doing the cleanups all over the year. Apart from that, as the Oscar has just uh, this, you know, told in the last presentation, of, you know, we, we on the World Environment Day, we also celebrated Digital Cleanup Day. Apart from that, and we always, you know, coming up with some new initiative ideas. Like this year, we have come up with this, uh, the, uh, you know, what are the environmental impacts of the cigarette birds? And the moment we pick up that particular this topic this year, you know, we go in the headlines, uh, in the headlines of the top newspapers of the country, that you know, because no people, educated people, they didn't knew that what. A cigarette, one single cigarette can do impact on the environment. It has arsenic, it has lead, it can it can have an impact on you. It can contaminate, you know, the thousand liters of water, one cigarette bird, it can kill your, you know, small animals, insects. So it how much environmental impact. So, you know, we always bringing up some new ideas. And apart from that, you know, I would all next would tell you Tom also that, you know, we are bringing up one, this one new campaign after this World Cleanup Day this year also. It's called the Blue Initiative. And we are also, uh, you know, working for the ocean and because India has a very long coastline and uh, we have in our rivers and in oceans because most of the rivers who get polluted, they end up getting polluted in the oceans. So we are doing work for the rivers cleanups also, small lakes revival in the water. So we are bringing up the, a lot of volunteers and a lot of, you know, the stakeholders at this one same table for this cleanups and other activities for the environment. So. Apart from this World Cleanup Day, you know, what we uh, uh, like, which we as a team, we always tend to include a lot of the college and students, you know, this, uh, the volunteers, because, you know, if we want to just not, we are not just cleaning up, we are also looking for the future. That because this the, the youth is the future and if, if they get aware if they get you know uh, what is the waste situation in India like suppose if I give you a small examples you know when we did a cleanup in India with the 1.6 million people I tend to give them the data that you know what you find the most in the in the trash so you would be amazed to know that you know what we find in the single use plastic and it is us you know in India we have this big multinational corporations. Uh, it's um, uh, Unilever or uh, other companies, or you know, you know, this multinational corporation. They make a small sachets of packet of like some more, uh, you know, the shampoos or other kind of things. And these small sachets, they only make it in this in the in in India, and not go to the other countries. So which are not recyclable, which has multi-layered system. So we end up using that. You know, every plastic is not recyclable. This is something you need to understand that this this plastic system which we have in our mind that is recyclable. This is not they end up in the landfill. What happens in the landfill we all know, and it, it, it reaches down to the groundwater. If it evaporates, it, it end up having the air pollution. So we are working in all over the year in all the other aspects. So I I would like to thank you for all of you to giving this to us listening patiently. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Blanchett for showing us and um, like for highlighting also the impact of cigarette butts and the listeners and highlights of the World Cleanup Day. And next we have two speakers who are both working uh, for Planet Heroes. 
Monica Haberich is the co-founder and product manager of Planet Heroes and responsible for the visual design strategy and cooperation with business partners. Carolina Gurgu is the head of content communication and PR management. Planet Heroes is the first digital crowdfunding platform specializing in raising funds for cleanup actions taken by users. Their mission is to promote bottom-up ecological activities and provide the opportunity to reward people who work for the benefit of our planet. Ladies, we're looking forward to hearing something from some ladies. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you can all hear you can all hear me. I will try to share my screen with presentation. I hope uh, the technical issues won't. Uh... Okay, um, all right. We can hear you, see you, and. All right, perfect. Uh, presentation. All right, okay. So I will start. Um, uh, we are a team of Planet Heroes. It's a crowdfunding platform uh, focused on raising, helping to raising the, the funds for cleanup activities. Um, it's a common online space uh, for everyone who are organizing cleanups. Uh, to show the effects of their work, to, to publish the pictures before the cleanup and after the cleanup. And uh, we are helping to raise the funds uh, for their voluntary work. Uh, so it's how the platform looks. Um, it enables everyone to publish uh, the projects uh, and get founder, funded by members of the community. Um, I will show some uh, examples uh, of the projects uh, published on our website um, because we cooperate with people all over the world. Uh, we are looking for activities, uh, activists uh, who are organizing the cleanups and um, it's one of the person that uh, organized the cleanup in Nairobi in uh, Matar Islam. Um, uh, it's the area hugely uh, polluted uh, with mostly plastic bottles and um, waste spread all over the city. So it was one of the projects uh, organized in Kenya. Uh, it was, I think, 19 uh, big bags of garbage uh, collected uh, in the area. And the effects of this cleanup was published on our website. Uh, so the other uh, people uh, could donate uh, to show the uh, the appreciate appreciation of the work uh, here is a cleanup made in zanzibar uh, zanzibar sorry mm, it was big action uh, taking place in september with around 700 kids uh, from from the school uh, who are um, collecting the waste uh, in Jambiani village. Um, uh, this, cl this cleanup uh, was a big event. Uh, the, the money collected on our platform, uh, sorry, they were, um, Oh, they were collected for uh, for for the to buy the computers for the school uh, for for the kids. Uh, here's another example of the cleanup taking place in Cameroon in Douala. Uh, this place is hugely polluted by plastic bottles uh, produced from the brewery and the bottling company, and they are um, spread all over in the city and. Uh, and they stayed in the in the river um, in the city. And uh, here is a couple of pictures of the uh, of the example of the project that they are published on the uh, Planet Heroes website. Uh, we are we were able to to reach many activists uh, who are organizing the cleanups and. Uh, convince them to publish the effects of the work and uh, we try to help them raise the funds because we, we are co co um, cooperating with the corporations with CSR budgets and um, 
we are trying to promote uh, these cleanups um, to inspire the others and uh, help these uh, volunteers to get uh, funded, to get uh, uh, some money for the action uh, what they are organized. Um, okay, so we'll just quickly go uh, throughout our um, the way how we work. So those you can um, work and send support to other people who clean up. It works very simple way. If you want to uh, clean up some dirty natural area, it's enough to register on our website, create a, a profile, and then um, take three photos. The first photo is taken before the cleanup, so in to see uh, the dirt, uh, the layers scattered around in some natural um, places. Then you clean and you take a photo of uh, after cleaned area with the sign uh, with hashtag planet heroes of course you need a third photo which is a proof that you have thrown away the collected garbage in a, a proper way uh, in a, a trash can or uh, in some waste bin or resting point so these three photos are enough to create a project you create a project and you described and then you publish uh, whole community uh, in the world who see the project so this is the other side uh, for um, people who want to support and can send you a donation as a thank you and as a um, the donation can be any amount of money um, and uh, of course you can spend it to create more projects um, to organize your community. So um, the whole um, methodology is uh, very simple. We want it to be very user-friendly. Um, this is the, 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 the way you see our website. So three photos, short description, um, and everyone in the world can, can send you the donation. You can end your project as soon as you want, or you can make it last um, and wait for more people to, to support you. Um, right now, in Planet Heroes, we are working on the uh, Ambassador Program, which is um, uh, the way to find more people, find more local enthu enthusiasts and activists in local areas who well know the, um, uh, the problems that are happening in, in their city or in a village. And we want to contact them and help them to organize local events um, to spread the idea in, uh, in their surroundings, in their neighborhoods, and organize more events um, and communicate the, the whole idea and the whole um, uh, activities and events in social media. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Monica and Valentina, for coming as um, the site like them. Thank you. And then the others, and what, how you're using uh, cleanup to create, or like how people can use it to raise money for the good causes they are doing. And now we are coming to our last panelist. Nicholas Kolesh is, uh, brings a strong international background in the chemical and plastic business. He is the Vice President of Project Development at the Alliance to End Plastic Waste and responsible for sourcing, development, planning, and implementation of projects focused on ending plastic waste in the environment. Nicholas, I'll kindly ask you to keep the moment at uh, the time so we have some time for questions. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, pleasure to be here and to share a little bit about what the Alliance is doing. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, UN Habitat for the invitation and also to the fellow, fellow uh, panelists for bringing the ex inspiring examples of uh, what cleanup can do and uh, the great uh, efforts that are being made. Um, just a little bit about the Alliance and who we are. So the Alliance is a unique organization. Uh, we develop, accelerate and deploy solutions. We catalyze investments and we, we seek to engage communities. Um, we're actually able to leverage a cross value chain sector approach with engagement from uh, manufacturing all the way through to waste management uh, and other companies all the way in between. So our, our goal is to enable global action uh, to scale and deliver local solutions on the ground. 
Uh, and this is a, a collective effort that's needed. I mean, we, we have access to a lot of resources from our member companies, um, and, and we want to deploy those solutions on the ground where they can uh, make the greatest impact. So these collective resources um, it really enable us to, uh, to affect things on the ground, affect projects that can uh, really make a difference in, in a lot of different areas, including uh, cleanup. We're able to leverage local insights um, and really working with partners that are on the ground in the areas where uh, leakage of plastic waste into the environment is greatest. So the Alliance is actually focused on four key pillars of activity. Uh, the first is on infrastructure. So we fund new approaches to build and deploy critical waste management infrastructure and systems uh, to collect plastic waste and increase uh, recycling. A big part of what we're focused on is bringing innovative solutions to the fore. Uh, so we support and, and scale new technologies uh, using our funding um, and using the expertise to, to, to promote capacity building as well as incubation services to bring innovative startups to market. Education is a key part of this, uh, of this challenge that we face. And I think several of the speakers have highlighted today uh, how we need to engage with local communities. And that's what we're seeking to do through the projects that we are undertaking. Uh, lasting change to end plastic waste in the environment is, uh, is up to all of us. And uh, it's up to all of us to, to take action. And last but not least, um, a very, very important topic for today is obviously cleanup. Um, so we are supporting communities, organizations, and so on with cleanup activities that will enable a plastic waste free environment. Uh, again, some great examples that we've seen today uh, and uh, plenty more that the Alliance is involved in. So cleanup for us is, is an important area uh, and it's active in several of the projects that we are working on. Uh, however, the Alliance is focused on also addressing plastic waste at its source. Uh, we heard from Oscar uh, also the need for um, engaging in cleanup activities, but understanding that the, the source, the tap needs to be turned off uh, of plastic leaking into the environment. So we're targeting holistic solutions at the Alliance that enable implementation of integrated waste management. Uh, we have this involvement in education, engagement, and community, which is critical for, uh, for interventions to take place on the ground. Uh, and we do see cleanup as a critical component of creating pride in communities, ensuring waste management efforts are sustained. Uh, and again, I'd like to highlight some of those words that we heard before. So volunteer cleanups, they create momentum. Uh, mismanaged waste is a, is a key challenge. Uh, and by engaging with communities and, and organizations that are taking action on the ground, we believe we can bring an end to, uh, to this part of the plastic waste uh, challenge. So from the Alliance's point of view, uh, we have a number of projects that are taking the benefit of plastic waste collected to create social enterprises and to make use of, of plastic waste uh, once it's been uh, taken out of the environment. So I've given a few examples here of some of the projects we have been working on uh, over the last little while. The first one is called Closing the Loop. Uh, it's in uh, in uh, Accra in Ghana. So together with the Asase Foundation, we're helping women entrepreneurs to build their own recycling businesses to take ownership of that and uh, to ensure that there is waste uh, cleaned up from the environment and uh, economic value generated from that. The second one to highlight here is a plastic, a zero plastic waste cities. This is an initiative together with the Grameen Creative Lab. Uh, we're having two projects there, one in India, in Puducherry, and the second one in Tanan, Vietnam. Again, it's a social business model to build sustainable waste management systems that can increase demand for plastic waste. Uh, and by increasing demand, we, we want to ensure that there's an incentive to, to get it out of the environment to, to better manage it at its source. And again, that's a key aspect of this project. And the last one we wanted to highlight here is the Planks of Promise project recently launched in Manila in the Philippines with our partner, the Plastic Flamingo. So again, this is a social enterprise aiming to uh, increase the collection of plastic waste in, in the Manila area uh, and taking that plastic waste and turning it into usable products. In this case, uh, boards and planks that can be used for building and construction as well as for uh, building disaster shelters. So again, a number of projects here that, uh, that leverage the ability to clear plastic waste from the environment and turn it into uh, valuable products that can be used uh, to benefit social enterprises. And I wanted to, to close by again, highlighting uh, what Jeff actually talked about a bit earlier, the altogether global, uh, global cleanup. So as you know, on Saturday, it's, it's World Cleanup Day and the Alliance is uh, taking a, a very strong action here to to really push a global movement uh, to remove litter from the environment one piece at a time. 
So we all have a responsibility. Uh, we have a responsibility as, as, as organizations, as individuals, as governments uh, to take action on plastic waste. And, and the Alliance is in place to support many of those efforts. But it also can start with each of us. Um, and that's what we want to support through the Altogether Global, Global Cleanup on, uh, on Saturday. So uh, take advantage of, of this opportunity. Uh, you can download the, the, the Literati app that uh, Jeff was uh, mentioning. Uh, and this is a great way to, to get involved, to get your family involved, to get schools involved, uh, and, and to take action on the ground. Uh, as Jeff also mentioned, we've partnered with TED-Ed, uh, and you can find on this uh, website, altogethercleanup.org, uh, some videos around, uh, around this area of uh, education, youth involvement, and lessons and videos that are available to help understanding of uh, help with understanding around the the challenges and the actions that can be taken uh, to address litter in the environment. So the goal is to really address a litter free world here with a million expected participants. We have many of our member companies actively involved. Uh, we're actually involved so far in 16 countries and counting. So every day we're getting very much uh, a lot of encouraging messages coming through around people who want to get involved on the ground uh, with this cleanup initiative. So uh, with that, thank you very much for the opportunity to share the uh, some of the activities from the Alliance 10 Plastic Waste. Thank you, Nick, for those words and for taking off uh, some of my responsibilities. I also wanted to highlight some of the work we've been hearing, but <laughs> you already did that. So I just want to maybe highlight that we've heard now from all our panelists. Um, the, the good things like why we should do cleanups. A lot was mentioned about community engagement and um, behavior change. And but on the other side, uh, it was also, for example, that Oscar mentioned, is a cleanup enough? Should we like mismanage waste? Should we look at this? If what is the real impact of of cleanups? And this is maybe something we should go in, into the discussion with. Uh, my first question that I'll pick from the Q and A. Um, is going on to the what impacts the do um, in cleanups have, and I'll ask it to all panelists. So whoever wants to take the floor, please feel free to answer this. Otherwise, I'll pick someone. And Sophia was asking, can cleanups help mitigate the consequences of climate change, and how? So whoever feels you want to answer this, please feel free. Yeah. I'm happy to say the first one on what impact do cleanups have. So I think it's kind of multi-led. At the very first level, I think there's something really powerful about engaging with a problem physically. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of documentaries and people uh, are really kind of taking them on board and realizing that we have a huge problem on our hands. But from experience, and, and we've been kind of doing this for years now, getting huge quantities of people involved in a hands-on kind of um, um, kind of basis, the difference is huge. You know, there can be these people who are so passionate about it, but until you take them down to a beach and they see it with their own eyes and they pick it up with their own hands, um, that penny doesn't really drop. And the amount of times we've had kids, especially kids with families, but kids come up to us and tell us how their mum or their dad was using a straw or was using a bag. It's amazing just how um, kind of impressionable the next generation is and, and really having that tangible educative experience, which is what a cleanup is essentially, um, is, is just invaluable. So I think the first level I, I just want to stress is it's an educative solution. It's not going to fix the ocean plastic pollution kind of single handedly, but it will create the upstream change in people's behaviors to stop a lot of plastic entering the oceans in the first place. Um, the second impact, I think, is when you actually really scale it up and you start working with communities like so many of these panelists are doing, you're actually often creating jobs in these areas. You're creating kind of economic stimulus, financial income in locations where quite often they're struggling in this area. If you look at what's happening in the world at the moment with COVID-19, there are so many beautiful places that are struggling with plastic pollution and have been for a long time, but used to rely on kind of the tourism industry. Now, this is just one example, but there are so many of these people becoming unemployed. And if some of the kind of initiatives at this table, plus the countless other initiatives that exist in the world 
are able to partner with these communities, provide base level income and education and get them clean, cleaning the environment at the same time. It's really kind of two benefits for the price of one. So I think, first of all, see cleanups as education, but also see them as a tool for community empowerment and income generating in places that need it. Thank you, Tom, for highlighting the impact and avoiding my question about the climate change. <laughs> Maybe the SI wants to take that one up. <laughs> I mean, if you want me to, to give it a good stab, um, I didn't feel too confident, but really for me, um, the only way I can explain myself is somebody who wasn't an environmentalist. I was a completely normal bloke in a normal job, just going about my business and probably having quite a big impact on the world, if I'm being completely honest. For me, when I started doing cleanups, it was really the first step in the road. You know, I was doing it because I, I had been shocked into action, but it was very much like a, it's almost like a gateway drug into environmentalism. You know, you open that door into environmentalism with something tangible, with something as tangible as kind of going and doing a cleanup. And all of a sudden you start learning a bit about carbon and the global kind of um, the sorry the, the the climate crisis and then the biodiversity climate uh, crisis and the extinction crisis and it really is a slippery slope and I think that um, cleanups from their kind of educative um, ex experiential nature are really just a stepping stone and I think the biggest thing stopping us all from achieving a world without a climate crisis is people willing and caring to actually make that that change say no vote with their wallet not take that plane journey that they had to so i think the more people we can get into cleanup the more people we can kind of open the next door into um potentially the climate crisis and then even further down into some of the other kind of existential problems that we're facing you know i'll continue on with tom's point i, I do think it starts with capturing the hearts and minds of people because until you are really getting people to care on an emotional level, it's tough to get them to act. And once you're able to empower people, they need a tool, they need a way to actually bring their desire into action. And it has to be simple yet sophisticated. And so I think as the cleanup activities are a way of bringing people face to face with this problem, it can onboard them to really creating impact on a much grander scale. And when you do that in aggregate, meaning people all over the planet, there's real opportunity for systemic shift. Thank you for the for both interventions. And I'll just continue with the next question that I'll ask Nick. Um, the question is from Christina, and she's asking, how do we shift responsibility from the consumer to the producer for long-term solutions? And I just want to have two sentences so we can add on to some other questions, because I think this is a whole other topic, but I think in the context of the cleanup, this might still make sense. Okay, thanks for the question. I mean, we, we, have, we all have a role to play, and uh, the, the alliance itself is, is uh, formed by a number of member companies uh, where uh, action is at the forefront of our agenda. So uh, I think there is a, a shift in momentum at the moment towards action on the ground. Uh, and the Alliance is, is putting in place projects that are enabling, uh, first of all, that we get communities on the waste management hierarchy, as we call it, that we turn off the tap, that we provide that infrastructure that enables uh, communities to have a waste management system so that plastic doesn't end up in the environment. So there is a lot of effort underway to put in place the structures and the systems that uh, are lacking in some parts of the world uh, in order that we can stop the leakage of waste into the environment. Um, there is a, an onus on all of us, of course, right? Uh, and and that, is, that starts with the engagement in cleanup activities, but it also starts with uh, engaging in our own uh, communities around what waste management solutions need to be. Um, but again, we are we are there to support the implementation of waste management infrastructure where it doesn't exist uh, and uh, ensure that we do turn off the tap uh, and stop plastic waste from getting into the environment in the first place. Thank you, Nick, for this answer, and I hope that you can hear how to see the comments on this. My, the next, I'll um, join some of the questions, and they will go mostly um, at this point to offer and uh, sorry. And uh, the question is one question, which was uh, from Edwin, who's saying we have the health service 
Department of the City of Bulawayo in Zimbabwe, and they have monthly cleanups that are organized countrywide. The uptake by the community has not been as good as envisaged. How do we get a buy in for sustainability? And how can I look with the question um, from Winnie, who's asking what sanitation, san I'm very sorry, one sanitation method have you used to stress the importance of conservation in Kenya? So maybe the two of you can help us and um, help our audience find out how they can engage more with the community. Whoever of you two wants to go first, Oscar or Frank. You need to unmute yourself before speaking. Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and say, Oscar, please start. Oh, okay, uh, I'll go first. Uh, I didn't I didn't get the question quite clearly, especially about uh, Zanzibar. But what I heard is that uh, may, maybe if you could repeat. Sure. So the question was: They have monthly cleanups, um, but the uptake of the community has not been as good as they would like to. So how do you get the buy-in for of the community for sustainability? How can you mobilize people to come to clean up and to continue with the cleanups? And the other well, question was: What what methods in this regard also, what um, methods are you using to stress them? Well, uh, very well. I, I, I like the fact, of course, I'd like to congratulate uh, whoever asked the, the question uh, for the initiative, the, the, because the hardest part of organizing for cleanups is starting. And I'm really glad that they want to they want to um, increase the uptake and have many people to to participate. When we started, we didn't start with a lot of people. We started with less than uh, than 50 people in the streets of Nairobi, and very young people. A lot of us were still in the universities. And um, after after conducting a few cleanups and uh, talking to people, used our own our own networks, our friends uh, and our families, and we caught the attention of, of the media. We engaged uh, we engaged different partners. Uh, local government and uh, we build momentum when you caught the attention of the media the word spread out and um, a lot of partner organizations have increasingly wanted to to take part in our initiative so this, this is something it's it's a gradual process but you have to be very consistent in order to to have uh, many people join you because that shows your level of uh, commitment and resilience Thank you. Uh, Pankaj, do you have anything to add on that? Yeah, I think, you know, you can uh, come up with some new innovative ideas like we did last year. We gave a 10 minutes challenge as a one initiative that how much you can collect the trash in 10 minutes with your own, your two hands. And we and then the you know five fingers you can show this is the five ten minutes you pick up this and another you know the initiative incentives which we gave last year we gave the prize money is also that you know if someone uh, goes out and is money of this amount this amount so we actually you know collaborated with other com companies and who were responsible for like suppose uh, some cola company some other you know who were responsible for that particular who their companies so company was ready to pay the you know the, the amount of the this prize money so there are some few this uh, like this uh, uh, initiative which you have you can do it in a very quick manner and then you can have a lot of people who want to come in and join you Thank you. And then to maybe get another question, Jeff, do you have anything to add on these words you just heard or anything you want to give uh, to the audience in this regard? Well, you know, there's one opportunity that I think we would all probably agree um, has potential, which is gamification. So how do you gamify cleaning the world? And whether that's through things like digital badges, points, monetary reward, at the end of the day, there are extrinsic motivators, incentives, recognition, and reward that, at least at Literati, we believe can unlock a mass market opportunity. Now, is an, is an extrinsic motivator uh, as important as an intrinsic one? That's debatable. Um, we believe that the intrinsic motivation is actually much more sustainable. But in order to get people to take that first step, you know, there are opportunities to, to gamify this, and it's something we will begin testing over the course of the next 12 months. 
Say just to add, add on to that, because I've got quite a lot of experience with kind of building up a large group of kind of regular cleaners in in several different kind of countries now. The there needs to be a realization, and it's sad to say, but sustainability isn't mainstream. It's not cool. You know, we are the converted. The we are unfortunately the the smaller percentile of the population as it is at the moment. So. If we really want to to grow our events, we need to be designing them in a way that isn't just there to attract your converted environmentalists. You know, I love it when environmentalists come to our events, but I'm not changing anyone. I'm not creating impact. What I really want is to be getting people that actually don't really know what sustainability is and they can fall in love with it at that event. And that's the change that's gonna last. That's real measurable change. And just some ideas to the actual question, try getting people involved like start obviously make it a um, an event whether that's on facebook or eventbrite whatever it is try bringing down music or seeing whether you can speak to any local bands that may want to play there creating some external kind of pull factor that's not just the activity itself maybe speak to some local food fmb providers and see whether you can get a vegan burger company or, or whatever is available within your region to come down and, and offer some food as well and really turn it into an event because when you can turn it into an event and people come because it's fun then that's where you're making the most impact because people don't even realize it but you're tricking them into environmentalism and you're creating that change Maybe I can add. Maybe I could add briefly to that one as well, and that's exactly what we're aiming to do on the altogether cleanup. So, in our organization, in the Alliance Ten Plastic Waste, we we've actually created a competition uh, amongst our different departments. Actually, uh, using Jeff's app, uh, Literati app, we want to enter a code for our own department, and uh, we're going to actually be seeing who can cl uh, clean up the most waste uh, on uh, on World Cleanup Day. So these these things get people involved. Uh, we've had colleagues now reach out to schools. Uh, and uh, provide their code so that they can get as many uh, out uh, into the field cleaning up waste. So this idea of competition does get people excited indeed. Great, thank you so much for all those um, interventions and inputs. And to let us know that uh, for a lot of people, game and competition is still very important. And um, I'll ask one last question to Monica and Carolina. In the meanwhile, I want all the other panelists to think about and their last sentence, just one sentence, um, they want to say to the audience for the Wall Street Cleanup Day ahead. Okay, so think about it while I'm asking my question to Monica and Carolina. So in your experience, how is the perception of people? How do people support cleanups? Do they think, or like, do you have a feeling with um, the work you're doing? Are they supporting it? Are they thinking it's, it's valuable work or maybe rather not? Um, we, we were wondering how it is because um, people sometimes are posting the pictures of the area they clean on, on uh, social media, on Facebook or Instagram, and people are like really appreciating and they are commenting that it's a great job and uh, of course everyone are um, supporting it, but we were uh, just willing uh, to check if um, if there is some financial support uh, as well uh, possible. And for now, uh, people are donating some small amounts of money to, to show the support and to... Um, to give some reward for people who are cleaning. Uh, and yeah, I believe it will be getting more and more uh, common that... Uh, that donation uh, will maybe inspire the others to organize the cleanups and uh, group of people who are um, organizing such an event will be more motivated to, to organize another activities uh, because we believe that money can be an uh, important factor for uh, for such an event be being more um, pop um, popular. So, uh, yeah, I believe uh, it can be um, 
the, the, the people who are like emotionally uh, engaged uh, in the project will be bringing some uh, financial support as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much for this. So now we're going to our last round, one sentence per person, and we will start with Tom. I'd just say that the issue may be huge, but don't be disheartened by it. Be excited by the opportunities that are out there. Get out, roll your sleeves up, get involved with it yourself, even if it's on a tiny scale. You never know where it's going to lead. You may have a huge impact. Steph? Start with one piece. Individually, you can make a difference. Together is where we create the impact. Yes, um, I'd like to call upon uh, everyone to take personal responsibility in taking care of the environment, especially Kenyans, we can come together in wall cleanup, they come in huge numbers to clean up our environment. Thank you. I think it is about time uh, that we pause, uh, reflect, learn, and uh, invite new perspectives in our own lenses of the way we operate in our environment uh, that forms you know, our very own habitat. So this is very important. This is a time for action. Let's do it. Carolina? Um, I think that um, small steps uh, can make a huge difference and we need to act together. So it's uh, important to create the eco community for people who will be cleaning and supporting each other. Monica, you're muted if you want to say your one sentence. Otherwise, I'll give the last word to Nick. Thank you very much. Um, so, I mean, World, Club, World Cleanup Day is a global initiative, but effectively, uh, a global initiative needs to start with everybody. And it, so it starts effectively with the individual. Uh, and we're looking forward to everybody participating on World Cleanup Day uh, to pick up that one piece of litter uh, and uh, and make a difference. Great. Thank you so much for all to the panelists for joining, for letting us know uh, what you've done, what you're doing, what you want us to do in the future. And thank you all uh, for the attendees who uh, posted a lot of questions. I'm sorry we were not able to answer all of them, but um, some people have taken um, the opportunity app to put some things in the chat so maybe have a look, uh, look there or in the Q&A and answer some of the questions there and um, yeah so I hope every one of us goes Saturday out and will do something on World Clean Update and uh, looking forward to seeing or hearing in another form somewhere else thank you so much and have a great rest of the day wherever you are thank you thank you goodbye <laughs>